What's up, YouTube? It's Melt Metal Anthony here with another one for you. So this week, nothing's really been too what the fuck, other than making these curved handrails. What a nightmare, okay? This was an absolute nightmare. And it kind of inspired me to make you guys this video. I'm going to show you a few tools that made my life just a little bit easier while working on these rails. So as you can see, they came out pretty symmetrical. Everything looks okay. They're not perfect. They're not perfect by any means. But when you're hand curving these things and you're rolling them on three dimensions, because not only did I bend it this way, not only did I bend it this way, but then I also had to bend it this way because we're working with square tube here. So these things were just a, a fucking nightmare. They really were. I don't think I'm ever gonna do a set of square tube handrail, but I can say I did them and I can say I did them well. Um, I sent some pictures of the customer up close, far away, and uh, he was in disbelief that I could pull it off. So that's what you're looking to do, right? But anyway, enough about my pain in the ass job. Let's get into some tools here that could give you a hand in your endeavors if you decide you want to make curved railings or really any sort of railing. All right, let's get to it. The first little tool I want to show you, a um, very helpful tool. Every welder should have this regardless if you're doing handrails or whatever. This is a pipe and post level. And basically all it is, is a three directional level. You got one there if you're doing a horizontal railings as opposed to a vertical railing. Um, the thing I found about these and a little quick tip for you is the rubber band always breaks. Um, I simply just steal a hair tie from my wife. That's what this is, it's a hair tie. Um, they last a lot longer. You end up going through it anyway, but you just loop it through, you put it around your post like so, and then hook it on. Um, I'm gonna give you a closer up demonstration on this post right here so you guys can kind of see how it works. So it's pretty simple. All you do is go ahead, strap it on, I like the hair tie because you can even get away with like inch and a half tube, um, which you normally can't with a, when you have the, the stock rubber band, you usually have to loop it up or tie it up a couple of times. So I would just cut the, the rubber band right off and then just go straight to one of these hair ties. I think this thing was like 14 bucks. I don't know, I'll put the real price on the screen. Obviously the link to buy it will be down below. But as you can see, it's a really helpful tool. You can get your level on two dimensions, this way or that way. And you can see I'm at a, a little out of kilter right now. Just, I am, this would be perfect. So I'm like a 30 second out, whatever. doesn't really matter. Um, as long as you can't see it to the eye, it's, it doesn't really matter. But uh, yeah, this thing is super helpful. Um, I think this one probably came out of square a little bit when I put my bottom rail in because I was having to hand bend this and heat this rail. Um, it made it incredibly difficult to keep everything square and straight. But again, we're not building the space shuttle here. We're just putting a railing in. And uh, this customer is going to be pretty stoked when he sees this thing, I think. Um, because of all the different curves and dimensions, a little bit out of square, nobody's going to notice. The next tool that is an absolute must, and I'm sure a lot of you already have one of these, is a magnetic level. Um, I like Empire. They make a real, real stout level here. This is really the only one I've had. I haven't had to buy a bunch of them. As you can see, it stays in pretty good condition, but this is the type of work I'm doing with it. It's not really getting beat up like things do when you're doing heavy equipment type work. Um, this is definitely not my favorite type of work. I would rather be getting beat up by heavy equipment to doing this, but here nor there. I used it on these top rails, and I also used it when I was doing my uprights, um, because obviously you see I have a weld, these things welded to my welding table, so that way I can keep everything square and straight. And then I was using this big plate, I don't know if you guys can see it on the floor, uh, to get the, the railing. You'll notice that one's a little higher than the others because that plate's three quarter. Um, so this one's jacked up three quarter of an inch. I definitely need to have a magnetic level if you're going to be in the railing game. The thing about the railing game is it's a pain in the ass, but it pays better than like 99% of anything in the welding industry. I've made more money off of railings and stairways than anything else. You know, you might get paid a couple of grand for a day's worth of work on a heavy piece of equipment where a, a set of rails, you could make, you know, three to four grand in a day if you're quick enough. Um, so, I mean, that might be for you. You might be just chasing the money in this game. And that's, you know, that's perfectly cool. As long as you have the skills to pay the bills, I got no criticisms on you guys chasing the dough. This next tool is an absolute must if you're going to be in the handrail game. Let me grab that. 
So if you're a diehard fan of Melton Metal, Anthony, you know that I love this tool right here, right? And what this is, is a picket finder. This can be used for carpenters who make pickets, like for outdoor decks and railings, or it comes in really handy for guys like us. And what I like about this one is it's so flexible that you can go ahead and use it on a curb railing. And that's what I did. I went ahead and I found out what my spacing was gonna be or what I needed it to be. And then I went ahead and I just laid it on. Of course, with it being two dimensionally curved, it was a whole pain in the ass. But I just did a little at a time because I wasn't able to get every mark at once. As you can see, if I try to line up, I can get about four at a time. So I would do those four, line those two up, and then go ahead and do like the next three, I guess I could get out of this one, you know, and then so on and so forth. This is an absolute must if you're in the railing game. This is the number one tool I think everyone should have if you're gonna be in the railing game because it makes lining pickets up a cinch. Um, no more math, no more bullshit. Um, really, I'm an idiot and uh, I don't, I'm not very good at math. I mean, I'm not the worst, but you know, I try to avoid it as much as I can. So all I did with this one was find out where it was evenly spaced at the top floor and then repeat that pattern all the way down. And it happened to just kind of work out. I think these are three and three quarter inches spaced I like to keep all my stuff below four inches. Four inches is code on uh, railing on a second story on balcony railing, or I think it's maybe above three feet. So if you're like on a, a like on a, a raised platform, it has to be at least four. You have to have uh, four inches or less in between the railings. And basically, the rule is is that you can't fit a four in, a four inch sphere through the rails. And the the reason for that is because a infant's head is around four inches. I didn't have to do that with this. It's just the math worked out really good. It was aesthetically pleasing being like that. Um, and it's really just kind of how it panned out. So, you know, hey, I don't make monkeys, I just train them. But this was still a very, very time consuming job because of the rail, it's rounding these railings. I chose to use 11 gauge for this project just so I would have a little meat to work with. And I figured I was using a torch anyway to heat it and twist it, so it really wasn't a big deal if it was a little thicker. You know, it made this handrail really heavy duty, and um, I expect this thing to last quite a while for my client. Um, this is probably one of the nicest, most aesthetic pieces ever made. But the thing about heating with the torch is that you get that flaking and that crust. This stuff here that's stuck in between the cracks, right? And there's a tool that's necessary to smooth your rail back out so when your customer's walking down and rubbing their hand on it, they don't feel all the lumps and the cracks and the bubbles that uh, came from using the torch. Orbital sander. Um, this is an absolute must if you're going to be doing curved railing because you need to be able to come back and get all those gouges and bullshit out. Um, how I do it is I run a grinder over it first with a flat disc. And then I come back with a file on the corners and I kind of treat it like body work, you know, when you're using that long uh, cheese grater looking thing. And I just run it crooked, run it crooked, run it crooked. It's very tedious, a very long process. And then I come back with my DA and some 80 grit. I don't really like to get too finer, too much finer than that because you're, then you're just pissing into the wind. It takes fucking forever to get it done. And then I just sand her down. And then you get this nice, smooth, profiled finish that you see I have here on both top rails and bottom rails. Um, I don't want to spend the rest of my fucking life working on this railing, which I could, honestly. I mean, you could just keep going on this. You have to know when enough is enough on these rails, and you have to know what's going to look aesthetically pleasing, and that's really all it is. Is, is it aesthetically pleasing? Is it nice and sturdy? Is it ever going to break? You know, I mean, those are, that's the criteria for railing. You, you don't got to treat it like it's a, a science project and try to do everything to the absolute maximum when you're doing these. You just need to make it feel right and look right. You know, when you look at this, it's not perfect. It has some mistakes. Right here we have a little kink out where it kind of bows out a little bit and then comes back in. It was just a little mistake I made with the torch. And by the time I noticed it, it was already too late. I already welded everything back together. But uh, it, it's, a, it's a piece of art, you know, it's handcrafted. Nothing is ever perfect, so if you get into the railing game and things aren't working out exactly the way you envisioned them, don't beat yourself up over it. This is a very, very, very difficult thing to accomplish. Um, every welder who's seen this thing has been like, dude, how did you do that? 
You know, everybody I know is oh, keeps asking, how do you do it? And I keep giving them the same answer over and over again. Heat and patience, heat and patience. No, I did not film this because I am not a handrail expert, okay? I'm just a fucking guy who's good at welding and is decent at making railings, okay? I'm not the best out there. I'll go ahead and I'm gonna give you guys a quick walk around of this thing so you can just kind of see what I did and how it looks. Again, it's, it's not perfect, but it's a fucking handrail. So she came out pretty good. I'd say it's one of the nicer things I've made. You know, and they chose these square ornaments. I ordered these right off of King Metals. But like I said, I'm no pro. There's mistakes. You can see there's a little bow right there where I bent it too quickly, where I got a little impatient with the heat. You know, but again, remember, this is all hand-formed. Every bit of this is hand-formed. You know, I'm not a robot. And there you go. This side came out a little better, I think, but this was the second side I made, so of course it's going to be a little bit better. You know, but I'm pretty proud of this piece. I'm definitely not going to be upset about presenting it to my customer. Um, as you can see, I did my best finishing everything. You know, there's still some imperfections. You can see there's little, well, that's, that's Sharpie. I'm super stoked to have this rail finished. I hope the tool list that I laid out for you helps you out in your railing endeavors. Um, otherwise, yeah, that's the end of the video. I just finished cleaning up the shop. It was a fucking wreck in here. I must have picked up 10 pounds of fucking metal dust. Um, I'm definitely going to shy away from uh, curved railings from now on. But uh, you live and you learn. And I wanted to get this underneath my belt, this square tube curved railing. But with the square tube, it's three. Because you got your, your, your sweep this way. And then you got your downward. And then you got the actual top of the square tube you need to keep flush. So when your client is running his hand down it, he ain't twisting his wrist all the way down. You know what I'm saying? And then you have to mirror that on the bottom one. You know, and then the same, and then to mirror it on the other side, I mean, that was just a whole pain in the ass to make it look the same. I think I have more time into the second piece than the first one because I was trying to make the second one look identical to the first one. But hey, I bought the ticket, I took the ride, and that's how you need to be in this business. If you buy the ticket, take the fucking ride. Don't let your, don't let your customers down. Don't be a fucking schmuck, okay? Too many guys out there like to quit and like to tap out. You just get it done, okay? This is absolute fucking hell. But I was able to do it in my spare time. The customer was cool. He was super patient. All right, guys. If you like what you saw here today, like, subscribe, share, do the whole nine. Check out the tool list down below. If there's something you'd like out of the list, go ahead and hit the Amazon link that I leave below. Okay? That puts a little coin in your boy's pocket. I ain't doing too hot right now, and I can use a couple of dollars. Okay? So, like I said, like, subscribe, share, and I'll catch you on the next one. All right, guys?